Hi, how are you? Welcome back to the Cilia Universe. So today, I just realized we had overlooked a certain individual, uh, the most important individual, our main protagonist, uh, Kayanan of the Gorgon, uh, and the Gorgon people I'll, I'll go into today. Uh, she does run through the whole trilogy. It is her, mainly her story of coming of age. We do have a few other character stories. We've got Jersey's, a bit of Jersey's narrative, also um, Zandu's. But the main protagonist is uh, Kayanan. Uh, a lot of people come see, some people have asked me, can they pronounce it Kayanan? Uh, it's really up to you. It is pronounced Kayanan. So the I is very much uh, silent and similar to Jersey, how his J is silent. So we meet Kayanan on Ribelex, so Laos and the manor she's brought up in. So her parents are King Rion and Queen or Lady Agantha. She has a younger sister, Chidima. And from the moment we meet her, again, I don't want to give away too many spoilers, Kana is uh, having a coming of age ceremony. So with everyone on her particular, in her particular city in Laos and most generally other species as well. So the Gilead have something similar and so do the Necromancer style. But her people, the Gorgon people have a coming of age ceremony. Kanan's is a little different because she is the princess and she is marked as the what's called the prophecy or the Rivalex mark and they're worried or just concerned about what will happen on this night of nights because there's a lot going on uh, and yeah the Gorgon people are homo captosis that have morphed with archaea cells in which they can live in their ecosystem of a swampland uh, therefore Kanan is a Gorgon so she can transform of all the Gorgon people can. The Gorgon don't possess aura. So they don't actually have an emerald green aura. They don't go out of their way to attain it. They don't have a trained aura user uh, dic dictum or anything. That is basically something that the Thorin, uh police and have as for Thorin, uh Sheik. And then also you've got your Gilead Shielders, you've got your Necromancer Archmages. These all use aura. So the Gorgon are military combats or combatants when they are in their reptilian form. So when they're out of free form, but they don't all use aura. So Kanan is trained in combat. And I'm going to leave it at that because I'm like such a fine line for giving too much away right now. What is it about Kanan? So Kanan is, again, she's not my favorite. They're all soft spots for me, but she's definitely the child within. She's trying to find her voice. She's narky. She's looking for recognition in Jersey consistently. She is, I guess, always reaching and asking for more and not being given it. So she's not really sure how strong her spine is. I'll use that because uh, we'll see in the prequel why I say spine strong. And therefore she weakens at certain moments, certain things, certain, I guess, situations, especially in relationships that she has with others. She is very misguided. She's not sure, is she doing the right thing? Is she not? And that boils down to not knowing herself well enough, not knowing her strengths, not knowing her weaknesses well enough, not being able, not being sure or able to understand if she's capable or has the competence to complete some of these trials and, you know, all the obstacles that get thrown at her. So everyone else kind of has this belief, but she fails at it. She's not really invested in herself. And therefore this journey that she goes on through book one, book two, book three, uh, of course, the companion novel, which I always recommend reading after book two. She's in here a little bit as well in Darian's sub story. And also we, we see her back when we go back to the, the dawn of when she was born in um, the Battle of Middle Falls to prequels. She's becoming who she wants to be. And that has taken such a such a roller coaster ride and it's a journey i think we can all relate to where we want to do best by not only our people but then this other system that we're a part of so as a gorgon and as um the heir of laos kayanan has to answer to the felrin congress who runs the felrin galaxy in which the rome system is in she is not sure when she does inherit that power if she should be giving her vote for her people to the Thoron Congress, if that's the right thing to do. She wants to know more about what goes on. She wants to know about the equality on Rivalex, the equality on 
in, in the in the Tharn galaxy in general. So her journey is not just about the change within, but it's also where is she going? Like what what do her people want? How can she best represent them? And do they not have that innate power uh, within them as well? Without her having to say, you know, I'm going to order everyone to be like this. Or can't, can they take on that responsibility and find for themselves uh, who they truly are and what they want out of each particular topic? So, yeah, the Gorgon are a peaceful people and they are heavily protected by the Gilyu. So, Canaan has a Gilyu guardian in Zandu and they've got a strong alliance. Laos and uh, Forstar of the Gilyu have a very strong alliance between the cities. Uh, Sile has been out of that alliance for quite a while. So, the tri species is quite divided. The necromancers of Sile are not involved in the trade and alliance that the Gilyu have because the Gilyu are gold traders. They have a very big mine and resources based on uh, the, the, the gold resource and the the Laos, um, the Gorgon actually have uh, like a timber, a lot of uh, infrastructure based on setting up buildings and things like that. They've got a lot of uh, produce as well. So they have the Ibel, which is the main uh, source of food from the swamplands and also Vera Berries from the Valley Woods in which they have most, uh, I guess, uh, land territory based on that particular uh, section as well. So that's what they trade. And of course, ramen rice as well. And so the style is quite out of that. They build, they have iron ore in their mines, uh, quite different. But yeah, there's been a, quite a disconnect. So we meet the Gorgon, we meet Kayanan and her journey runs through the whole thing, getting us through that foreign hierarchy and, and finding her voice. So I did want to do an extract. All right. And I want to do it. Here we go. So this is between her and Dursey when, you know, she's really not sure. She's on the brink of her coming of age at the start of book one. She's not sure who she is. Can she succeed? And Dursey's, you know, giving it to her in their melee, whether, you know, she's actually ready or prepared for this. Right. She felt relief washed through her. She'd actually, actually, actually executed her plan. But as soon as she widened her cheeks in a smile, the distraction cost her. The daggers dwindled, falling to the grass, and her kanjing deserted her, returning within. What was that? Dursey's face was downward to the ground at the immobile daggers. She didn't know what happened. It was a mistake, she said. Are you happy with that? Dursey said venomously. You're celebrating your coming of age and you're still making mistakes? What about the verticals? I'm trying my best, Dursey, she admitted. Mistake after mistake, Cannon. You're failing. I know, she replied. Then fail better. Dursey's loud voice pierced her ears. The words were floating in her head. Cannon battered her large green eyes at Dursey in scorn and flicked her long brown hair. She hated he was the one person who never agreed with her. He challenged everything she did. She'd always had this odd magnetism over people, a carnal attraction, and it helped her get away with others, but not with Dursey. Dursey was not one to take to her burlesque charm. He looked at her as if she was still five. Then he came at her. Dursey, lif Dursey lifted his metal blade straight at her. Without preparation, she repositioned to defend herself. And when her blade struck his, fear went through her. Stop overthinking this, he said. You're headed backward. I thought we'd made progress since the debacle at my cabin. Dursey was shouting as he kicked her in the stomach and she landed on the grass rolling a few times before coming to a stop. Breathing heavily, she held her winded belly. You are possibly the worst manile I have ever trained. Worse than Zandy with your incompetence. Where is the self-mastery of your pure mind? I mean, do your ears even work? Wait, Dursey snickered. Are you crying? Her emotion was brimming inside of her. Kane and rose from the ground a dirty mess and knuckled down tighter on her hilt. She was sick to death of the same condescending insolence the daft man fed her. For how long had she had to put up with him being so unpredictable? like the time he set 10 traps in her bedroom and nearly killed her when she opened her wardrobe. Her whole life she gave him everything she could and she was never, ever good enough. She couldn't take it anymore. Cannon sucked all, up all the energy, igniting once more in her aura and abandoning caution, she ran at him. Let me move on to the next chapter. So that's a little bit about Cannon and, you know, uh, 
quite frankly, she likes getting her way with people. Uh, she's a princess and she always has. And then we have Dursey, this arrogant, self-righteous, proud driven uh, Thorin Liege, who sees her not as pathetic, but as someone maybe clutching at straws half the time. The talent's there, but he sees her uh, fail more times than not. So that's the kind of start of their story and their relationship. Obviously, Xandu enters that as well. The Gorgon, like I said, are a peaceful people and have that alliance uh, with Forster as well. So yeah, that's the Gorgon. Uh, any questions, please let me know. Uh, Kanan does have a big soft spot. In my, on my, you know, within me, a lot of people ask, you know, which characters based on you? Is it Kayanan? Is it, you know, Archibald? They're all based on facets of who I have become and it's experienced as a human being throughout my entire life. So, you know, I can talk, tell you that I'm Prince Addy. I can tell you that I'm Dursley. I can tell you that I'm Xandu. I can tell you that there's parts of me that are canon, but they're all definitely characters that are within me. And I do hope that you enjoy the crux of them and how they have, ev they have and will evolve uh, through the series as well. So you can get the whole series, 155.95 uh, on my website. I will sign all of that for you. That's the Australian price. It is a little bit more uh, for US um, delivery. So that the 155.95 is inclusive of delivery Australia wide. Uh, but if you did were international, I've had a few people reach out how much is it internationally. Um, depending on conversion, you do have an extra, I think it's 45 or 50 US added to that price. That includes your uh, international tax as well as the um, shipping costs. So yeah, Again, enjoy the silly universe and as always, back to safely.